um, I know you didn't get to work much with guys like Rome and, and Solomon and Mario before they opted out of last season. But now that you have them back, has it taken them a little while to get caught back up to speed, shake off some rust, or, or have they caught up pretty quick? No, I mean, that's a day-to-day thing um, that – I mean, it's going to take – some time you got to have a, a realistic expectation now there, there's there's good things that they do um and you see that and everything that way but you know um football's it's not a lifetime sport you know what i mean like you don't go out in your driveway and and pass rush people or cover people you know like so um you, you know, it takes a little time to get back in the full flow of things um but I think so far there's been good things that each of them has done uh, in that regard there. But I mean, that's a, it's not only, you know, you have that issue when a guy misses a season due to an injury, but that guy's in your facilities and your meetings, he's in everything else when in their situation, they weren't in our facility at all because that's, that was the rules. So, I mean, like once someone did that, they weren't able to come in and be a part of, the team day to day because it was only the people that were getting tested and the people that were all that. So, you know, there's even a little extra element there um, that that of climbing back into. But so far, you know, been happy with with them and and uh, um, and to varying degrees, there's going to be a quicker recovery for each individual person, maybe a little bit different. Um, we might be doing a few more things differently in the secondary that Rome has to get up to speed with maybe than what solo has to do from what we're doing at defensive end. Jay, uh, when we spoke with CJ Colden last week, I think his quote was uh, learning the defense, you know, without having all the normal prep time was like, like learning Spanish. Uh, like, like foreign language. Uh, I'm curious, if, from your perspective, do guys seem a lot more comfortable compared to, you know, when it was kind of uh, drinking out of a fire hose, I imagine, for the guys, you know, last before last season started? Yeah, it was a lot more comfort, you know, I mean, from for everybody. Um, we know a lot more of what we are, too. You know, um, when we started off in uh, October, um Last year, you know, there was there's quite a few new players as well that that had to play um, because, you know, you just guys that you had just talked about that weren't here were some of those guys played the year before. Um, and then you had some new replacement players, you know, that were replacing guys that were seniors the year before and everything that way. And so you're trying to kind of figure out everything without a spring practice without a real fall camp and then really without all your freshmen who were in quarantine for the whole month of October, because we had COVID cases with them. So you didn't even really get the amount of reps that you needed. This is way different. Like this is a way different stratosphere that we're on right now than what it was in October. It's not, it's not even close. With everything that happened last year, it's almost like last season was a uh, practice season because everybody got their eligibility and most of your players are returning. Yeah, I don't ever look at it that way, though. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but those games counted. You know, I mean, like, I, I get it in that regard, but they, yeah. they count. But, uh, but I mean, as far as growth for this year, I mean, it's like you got a free practice season to get everybody ready for when you hopefully will have a full season and you didn't lose eligibility from anybody. Yeah, no, I mean, that, there's a big benefit to that, um, to have uh, – people back and have people in a situation that, uh, um, you know, there is a comfort level. Um, you know, we kind of know what some of these guys can and can't do, you know, and we kind of know who we are defensively. So we're not wasting time running some things that we're not going to run when we get to the season or something that way too. Um, so we can be a lot more directed that way. Um, and, uh, so yeah, for all that is a, is a big difference, um, you know, because there's, I mean, we still got to play those six games and there's still carryover from that. Um, and we have everybody back, but the reality is too, there's going to be a lot of people we play that have all their players back too. 
Um, so it's kind of a unique year in college football that way. I mean, there's going to be a lot of teams that kind of have a lot of experience, you know, um, and we're going to be one of them. Jay, you talked a little bit about how you had to have some guys step up uh, because of opt-outs and injuries, especially the defensive end spot. You saw guys like Devon Harris, Jalen Pate. Uh, what are your thoughts on those guys and how much confidence did they gain last year? Well, I mean, there's a confidence that they've they've lined up and played in games, and, and Devon's best performance was his last one, you know, against Boise. Um, and so, you know, I mean, you see a different – there's a different level of player now than there was in October last year with those two. Um, and that's, that's progress. That's the progress that you get from actually competing in games, preparing for games, going through that process. Um, and the progress that you get now that we're in a spring practice and double repping and doing all that, um, you know, so there is, there is improvement and there is progress with those guys. And so, um, it does make a big difference. And, and so, yeah, those two guys have been, you know, picked up where they kind of left off, um, here in the, in the spring. And, and that's been good to see. And I think that that's a position that should be a strength for us. You know, when you've got crawl back, you got Tegan back, you got solo back and you got Jalen, you got Devon, you know, I mean, there's guys there, you know, and so, uh, that should be a position of strength for us where we've got depth and we've got numbers and we've got quality. So, Jay, you guys had 17 sacks last season, yet your sack leader was your middle linebacker in Chad. I'm curious, have you always liked to mix up your pressure packages in terms of who you have pressure in the quarterback, or is that more a reflective of the guys that you were missing up front last season? You had to get more creative. Maybe, mm, maybe a little bit of both. Maybe a little bit of both. I mean, look, Chad Moom was a good blitzer. Um, so it's kind of in our best interest to blitz Chad Muma some, you know, Isaiah Gandy's a really good blitzer. It's probably in our best interest to blitz Isaiah Gandy some, um, you know, but let alone, you know, we do have, um, you know, some guys on the defensive line that if, you know, and when you're at full go with them that are going to be able to generate pressure themselves, um, to where you don't always have to do. You know, what you want, you want to uh, put your best blitzers in position to make plays, but you really are at your best defensively when your blitz game can augment a good front. You know, like, um, I mean, uh, you know, when I was at Minnesota, we had probably half our sacks in 2016 came from linebackers. Well, you know, that, that was kind of who we were in the nature of what we had to do. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of a, um, I, I think where we're at now, it's kind of, you're looking at like those things augment the players that we have up front. Speaking of, uh, of, of Chad, over a 12 game season, he was on pace to have like 140 tackles, which is pretty obscene. Two things on him. One, uh, did anything about his performance surprise you last season? And two, did you know that he played the piano? Because there is a video going around of him playing Great Balls of Fire. You know, I don't know. I did not know that he can play the piano. So that's kind of a um, – so him being able to do that, I will make sure that I find a way for him to be able to do that at some point, um, that I want to hear that. So maybe when we go to a hotel sometime in the fall, we'll find a, a, a piano there in the, um, in the hotel. That'd be kind of cool. I, I was at Northern Illinois. We had a defensive tackle once that, that uh, could uh, pound out clocks by cold play really well. And so he sat down in a hotel lobby and started doing it one time. I'm like, what the heck is this? So, no, I'll have to have him do that. That's, that'll be one thing. Um, as far as his play goes um, – Man, you know, you know, you just don't know that a guy is going to be as good as he is until you really, really get in it, you know. And and uh, I thought every game last year he improved. I thought we had a lot of guys, you know, kind of defensively improve every game a little bit last year. Um, but he definitely the level he played at um, and what he means to us defensively is is kind of immeasurable. Um, and, uh, he played at a very high level. Uh, he runs well, he plays so hard. 
you know. Um, and so the speed that he runs at, and he runs very well, he plays at that speed all 60 minutes of the game and every play that there is. And so that's, it's a, it's a good thing for sure. Jay, you're the defensive coordinator. You're going up against a new offensive coordinator uh, on the other side. What's it like to face this Cowboys offense now compared to what it was last fall? Well, um, I think, you know, it's the same kind of thing in one sense. There's a, um, when you look at it in terms of facing it in the spring, as opposed to facing it last October, um, you know, even like, I'm sure that they're able to do more things right now and they're able to have a much better level of installation and, and all that than what you were in a, a hurried up mess with COVID testing and quarantine and everything else. So, um, you know, they're very multiple. There's a lot of things that they're doing right now. It's very good for us to see um, defensively. So that presents a great challenge. Um, I think they're utilizing their people very well, um, you know, and so it's, it's fun. And, and, and I've worked, I mean, it, Tim's been great to work with. So um, that's, you know, that's always, uh, always a good thing. I mean, we, we talk, Hey, what do you need to see? Is there something that we need to do different? Is there something that you need to see more of that help you? Or is there something, you know, we go back and forth on that. It's easy. He's easy to work with right now. Um, and all that. And I'm glad he's here. Um, and, uh, no, I, there's a lot of things I like that they're doing on offense right now. Um, there's a multiplicity to it, you know, and there's a lot of things that they are doing and, and that's going to be very stressful for defenses to prepare against and go against, and it should utilize our players real well. I guess if there's one area on the defense that maybe doesn't have a ton of depth, it's at the cornerback spot. Uh, a guy who played nickel last year and really stepped in and I thought did a great job was Keontae Glinton. How special is it to have him and a Keon Blankenbaker in this defense now? Yeah, we're, we're, I've been really pleased with those two guys. Um, at nickel. Um, there's going to be times that we're going to play both of them together as we get to the fall. Um, there's a, there's a, you know, multipleness that will happen because of that. We'll be able to do some more things. We'll be able to focus on a couple of things. We'll, it'll help us against teams that, that want to spread it out and throw it and, and some things that way. And you know, we went to Nevada last year. Keon was our third or Keontae was our third corner. Like he wasn't even repping at nickel just because we kind of had to have another guy get ready to play corner. So, um, and that is still a, I'd say that's still a, a, like, you know, we're working, you know, on uh, three and four at corner. And um, the goal would be is for the third corner to not come out of the nickel group, uh, but for one of those other guys to step up and be the three and the four at corner to where we don't have to, you know, dip into different positions to make that work. But if we have to, we will. Jay, what, what have you seen specifically from Rome this spring coming back? And do you have him working at free or strong safety? So our strong safety is to the field right now. Um, that's kind of the, you know, in plays in the post a lot. So that's the position that he he's playing for us right now. Um, look, I mean, like I said, I, I've coached defensive backs for a long time. I don't know how many years now. I have to add it all up. But it's been a long time. Um, if a defensive back misses time, like that's that's a that's not a position you just go. Let's go. Let's just plug and play. Like the, from footwork, from vision, from everything else. So the first. What are we on now? Seven practices. Um, you know, that's been, there's been progress, but it's been, you know, it, it takes some time. Like you, you just don't plug it back in and go, wow, look at this. When a guy's taking time off. Um, and think about it. Like when you were in a situation like he was a year ago, like I said, we were only allowed to have people in this building who were being tested three times a week. So when those people weren't here, they weren't here. They weren't in the weight room. They weren't working with their strength coaches. What facilities were really even open, you know what I mean, to go work out, you know what I mean? So now you go, 
like, um, you know, you can't take six months off from running fast and then run fast. It takes you a little bit of time to get used to covering people and, and doing that. So I thought today there was, there was progress from him and everything that way, but you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I, and I told him before we started to spring, I'm not going to put an unreasonable expectation on you. You just got to get better every day and go and do that. And then let's see where, where we're at, you know, but um, so that's kind of the long and short of it right now would be the best part I could say is because it's just not, you know, like I said, it's, it's so different when you are a reactionary player, which a defensive back is. Okay. If I'm, if I'm a receiver and I tell you where to go, and where you're going, where the motion is, where you lined up and what you do. Okay. That's one thing, but now you have to react to all these things and you have to react to it with speed and with vision and footwork and everything else. And Oh, by the way, you hadn't done speed vision and footwork since December of 2019. That takes a little bit of time. So there's reality in that. And that's what we have to continue to work through. Jay, from your perspective, what was it like to, Fill out a depth chart late in the season that it, that had a Gavin Meyer and Jordan Bertinelli lining up in the middle, and and how impressed were you with those guys that just literally came out of left field for even people in the state that have covered this team? Um, I tell you, I was really pleased with how they played because um, I thought really the only game last year that we got moved a little bit up front or we got you know, kind of didn't handle some things the way that, that I thought we could have was against New Mexico. And that was kind of their style anyways, a little bit of ground and pound type of thing in that regard. And I thought that was the only game that we kind of got moved around a little bit. Um, I thought Gavin played very well for a true freshman coming right out. Jordan Burton Oli had a very, very good season and really kind of from week two on, you know, became someone who you began to really count on at a high level. And so, um, and, you know, he's, he's re- not practicing in the spring. He's recovering from an injury and everything, and, but he's doing well and, and he'll be back in the fall. And, and I, like I said, I thought he, I thought he played well last year and really did good things for us. And again, you know, it was one, it's one of those things, if those guys played, and you're getting moved all over the field and people are rushing for 250 yards a game on you, then that's one thing. And that wasn't the case in that situation. And so those two guys um, have been doing, you know, Gavin's done good things this spring and Jordan, you know, played good ball for us last year. All right, guys, we've got to get going here. Um, One more question for coach. Guys got one. So Jay, Jay, were you surprised at all, given how much attrition you guys had to look up and you guys are still top 40, top 50 nationally in a lot of defensive categories? Were you surprised at all with how well this group performed? Um, no, not in the end. And initially, uh, like the Nevada game's on me. And I think what happened there was, you know, we we're still trying to figure out who we were, what we were, um, and uh, try to figure out kind of like, what are we good at? What are, you know, and, and so like we were doing things in October that we never did during a season, you know, because at first we still weren't, are, are we able to do this? Are we able to do that? Are we able to, well, in the process, then you find out that, that, you know, we, we kind of have three pretty good linebackers, you know, um, that you find out that, Oh, Isaiah Gandy's pretty good. You know, um, you find out that CJ Colden got better every game as he got his legs under him. And um, you find out that Burton Oli can play, you know, you, all of a sudden you started figuring out some of these pieces um, and you put yourself in that spot and we play so hard and we really didn't make mistakes. And like, a, you know, I got interviewed here recently. And like I said, my biggest thing that I was, I look at, um, you know, you have all the different scorings and all those things, which is big. You know, that's what you got to be. Um, but you don't always have control sometimes over where that ball's at or if, you know, pick six counts against you in scoring defense, you know. Um, but we were – there was 14 teams in the country that gave up five yards a play or less, and we were one of them. And when you're looking at that, that's telling you that you're able to stop big plays, that you're not getting, you know – um, carved up in the run game and things like that. 
And I think that was a, you know, a big piece to it. So, you know, in October, I had no idea as the season went and realized what these players were and how hard they worked and, and they got better every week. You know, in the end, you look up at it and go, yeah, okay, I could see that. Um, maybe while you're in the middle of it, you don't feel it. But at the end of it, when you look back on it, it's not a huge surprise. Um, and I, I, our expectation is we should be much better this year. That's our expectation.